You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, a serving email to the gaming dragon today. I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of In Case of Emergency. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> I am pretty unlikable. We just have to part. That's our period of time. It's not unusual for friends to grow distant, especially after a major life change like moving to college. Maybe he just wanted a fresh start. Maybe it's a blessing that by doing so, he gave you one too. You stand in uncomfortable silence for a beat. In the ninth grade, you were going to start a band together. So, what did you what did you do down here? Such an expression grows nostalgic. It was quieter back then. Just Remus, the servants, and all the Peregrine to explore. He looks out a window, the gray sky casting a gloomy light on his face. You look out the window, too, and see flat plains of purple-gray grass, some dying farmsteads, and a handful of bleak-looking trees. There's an ominous, stark mountain range in the distance. It's obvious Cedric is seeing something else. You feel, not for the first time in your life, like you've arrived too late to the party. Anyways, the resolution wasn't so close at the time. Remus was expecting champions soon, but there, but there was still time. I was the first one to come down here, before Wes and Luke, I mean. I tried the amulet, the shield, the sword... The amulet burned me. The shield was too heavy and the sword wouldn't come out of the stone. But, you know, when people come from the outside world, that means they're de destined to be a champion of some sort. The Reavers figured it just wasn't my time yet. He helped me train, and he helped me train. When Wes and Luke appeared, they picked up the shield and the amulet. We assumed I was supposed to wield the sword. I just needed more time. Well, turns out that wasn't the problem. Cedric blinks, wrinkling his nose like he's tasted something sour. He's processing something that he feels embarrassed about, but he's also embarrassed to be feeling that shame in the first place. At least, you think that's what he's feeling. It's been a while. Maybe his entire facial repertoire has changed in that time. So, it's going to be my job to train you. Come on. He rises, pulling a very real-looking sword from the scabbard hanging at his side. Uh, shouldn't we be using training swords? You don't think he would skewer you to the wall, but the two of you have gotten into worse accidents. No, I'm, I'm good enough not to hurt you. And you're not good enough to hurt me. He smirks, readying his blade. Can we talk? Can we just catch up? Cedric frowns. He doesn't put away his sword. Catch up? We haven't talked in, like, years. What have you been up to? What happened to us? You've been getting we a weird vibe from him the entire time you've been here, not to mention the past four years. Cedric eyes you warily. What is there to talk about? I went to my classes. I found this place. I was going to save the world. We never got to hang out. Not that you care, especially if he doesn't care. It's okay to be hurt. Okay, fine. It hurts a little bit. You were going to be roommates and sneak into parties and get up to shenanigans together. I've been talking about this since junior high, junior year of high school. I got busy. I mean, I had... He looks around the hall, each surface covered with maps, hundreds of different worlds, another world just outside the window, all of it just for him. How could you compare? I'm sorry things didn't work out with the sword. I didn't mean to... It's okay. I know you didn't. Let's just move on, okay? Good talk. Good talk. Uh, aren't you glad you, ha you hashed this one out? The two of you stand around in an awkward, tense silence for a while. Cedric looks almost apologetic, if unsure, of if unsure why he is. He should probably get going. I have to... I should go. Great. I mean, m me too. Yeah. I see you around. Excuse yourself from the map room, feeling infinitely more comfortable once you're alone again in the hallway. Body and feet sore from your excursions around the castle, you realize it's time to meet Remus in the gardens. You're still not sure who the guy is. Cedric mentioned, Cedric mentioned he was a king. Was that a circlet around his head? He seemed nice enough, you suppose. He was polite, friendly, and seemed happy to, to have you here. That's more than you can say about most mentor figures in your life. You passed several of the castle's guard and staff in the corridors. All in period-appropriate garb, most of them deliberately avoid eye contact with you, ducking their heads low and, and bowing briefly as they pass. Second, y'all. It is water time. Mm. Mm. Okay, that's good water. Alrighty. One woman carries a basket of bread on her head. She bows curtly, torn between balancing her payload and showing you the proper respect she must think you deserve. The result is forced and artificial. Weird. You're not, used to, you're not used to people treating you like this. 
Not that people are usually dying to make eye kind to contact with you, but it's different. The people here clearly think highly of you, whether or not you'll prove worthy of it is another matter. With enough wandering, you stumble upon a tall, glass-lined corridor with double doors that lead into the garden outside. The windows reach for the full from floor to ceiling, enormous apertures that letting cool, natural light to illuminate the marble tiles. The garden is impeccably manicured, filled with perfectly rectangular hedges and hedges and neatly trimmed topiary. A menagerie of bushes groomed to resemble quadrupedal animals parade around the the outside, smelling the flowers and ducking behind tree behind tree trunks with shimmering purple bark. The garden centerpiece is a quaint gazebo with white rails and a pale wooden slab. It looks like the paint is still new, either it's been recently re recently repainted or magically enchanted to stay with to stay that way. Standing just outside the gazebo is Remus, who tends to a thorny bush of blue roses with a pair of garden shears. As you approach, he greets you. Kieran, good of you to join me. Carefully balanced between his fingers, he holds three roses by their stems. He nods his head toward the gazebo, where a circular table of glass and iron waits. He places the roses in an embossed vase on the table. Is this real? Blue roses don't occur naturally, do they? I grow them myself. We don't have those where I come from. They're rare here, too. This was a years-long work of several horticulturally inclined magicians. Now I have an entire garden full of them. His gaze scans the garden like a watchful steward, the king of his realm. The sky is gray, but you feel the balmy warmth of the sun nevertheless. The smell of flowers and freshly cut grass is overpowering. Somewhere you can't see, birds are singing. It's not real, it's pretty close to the real deal. So this garden, was this all you? Do you like it? It's, I've been cultivating it for decades now. It's beautiful. I've never seen anything like it. I think royalty worked in gardens. Remus chuckles, the corners of his eyes crinkling with laughter. This one does. Gardening is a lot like ruling, except plants are much more resilient than people. Much more predictable, too. Plants are better than people? Oh, surely. But only because I'm a lonely old man with no friends. He smiles blithely at his own confession, apparently unperturbed. What about the castle? It seemed like there were a lot of people who wanted your attention earlier. Servants and subjects, certainly. Not quite the companions, the companions one is looking for. I found that it's easier to grow trees than it is to govern people. Plants only need water, sunlight, and some love. If you forget to water a plant for a day, it'll likely forgive you. That is, provided they're not a particularly vindictive fern. Remus smiles fondly, lost in memory as he looks out over the lavish garden. But people? If you say the wrong thing or make the wrong choice, people will remember. Bushes can be trimmed. Stray branches curtailed. People are trickier. You're no stranger to that fact, amen? That's enough about me. Who are you, Kieran? Tell me about yourself. Oh, I'm not very interesting. I'm sure that's not true. You're here, after all. Well, uh, my name is Kieran. I was supposed to graduate college last semester. I am a Gemini, and I like long walks on the beach and pineapple soft serve. You have good taste. And I guess I'm supposed to save the world? Astutely observed. We would be lost without you, champion. What about your duties outside of this world? Surely you have other, obliga other obligations you're sacrificing to be here. Second, y'all. It is water time. I am, don't have a job yet, but I'm working on it. I actually just talked to my professor about this. You do kind of look like him. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Are you about to say that this Wolf King looks like your wolf professor? Do you think all wolves look the same? Um, it's not offensive if they objectively look similar. No, it's still offensive. Kind of change the subject, okay. Um, I'm also taking a summer class because I failed at my last GE requirement and couldn't graduate. A GE requirement? Yeah, like, you have to take a range of classes in science or the humanities or some sort of physical education. Ah, sounds like you were being prepared to be a well-rounded individual. A series of memories flicker rapid fire through your mind. Showing up to class, joining student orgs, going to the gym. Then, skipping lecture, ghosting clubs, sleeping in. Celebrating the night of your 21st birthday by heading to a drugstore alone to pick up a bottle of margarita mix and being congratulated by a cashier you recognize from your first year writing seminar. He's dyed his hair green and gotten face piercing since then. Pretty sure you're still wearing the same gray hoodie you started wearing every day towards the end of that semester. Yeah, you could say that. Are you a specialist then? What are you studying in school? Uh, what are you majoring in? Uh, sports medicine, a real major. A real major. Choose quickly. This time, in two to three years, so this will mean everything and nothing. 
Computer science. I'm studying computer science. Ah, it seems to fit you. Does it? So, this class you're taking over... So, this class you're taking over the summer. Is it not part of your primary studies? No, I need to, I need to fulfill a life skills requirement. Actually, now that you think of it, it's kind of ironic that you were able to pass that requirement originally and graduate with no actual life skills, then failed it because of every, because of a very real life experience. And now you're about to make up that requirement by delaying further real life experience and instead doing something stupid, like taking care of a dildo that you've already lost. Uh, speaking of which, if you see a, uh... False foul. If you see a false phallus anywhere, let me know. I think it rolled into the void at some point, but I, and I really need it for this class. This is an assignment from your instructor? Very strange. Tell me about it. If it's important to you, we will ensure it's safe. It returns safely to your hands, I swear it. Thanks. Thank you. Remus leans back in his seat, resting one arm on the glass surface on the, of the table. Now, how are you settling in? I'm sure this whole ordeal has been surprising, to say the least. Oh, no. I'm managing. I'm hanging in there. I'm still not sure I understand what's happening. It feels like a dream, doesn't it? Like it's too good to be true? Your friends felt the same way. Are they the only ones? From your world? Yes. Every so many years, your world sends new champions to reverse the tides of the resolution. There are always three. The shield, the amulet, and the sword. That's you. The resolution is a constant force that threatens our lands. It spreads from the mountain's heart, the center of the world, scouring the lands and destroying everything in its wake. But what is it? It is the resolution. But it is also a resolution. It's a conclusion. The last chapter in a book. It's the end of all things. If everything ends? Remus is smiling, but his eyes are solemn. Peregrine will be no more. You will no longer have access to this world, and I will no longer exist. That would be bad. Yes, indeed. But if we manage to thwart it once again, everything will return to its former state. The void will retreat, and, that, and return what it has taken from us. Farmland and forest will be revived. Rivers will flow again, and your He gestures vaguely in your direction, searching for the right words. Lost manhood will be restored. For your studies. Manhood restoration sounds good to you. The past couple of months have felt like a series of consecutive kicks to the dick. That'd be great. That's actually the whole reason why I'm here. Because it rolled down the stairs and into this place, and I needed the sword to get it out. So you know, it is water time. Okay. Remus raises his eyebrows, pleasantly bemused by the yarn you're spinning. It's a long story. And you said you weren't you weren't and you said you weren't interesting. The two of you chat for a while in the comfortable shade of the gazebo. It's easy to get lost in the slow rhythm of this place. No deadlines, no assigned assignments, just sitting outside in a beautiful garden. Before you know it, the sun is setting and the fantasy and the fantasy cicadas are out in full force. Remus invites you to stay for dinner. Or you to refuse free food. You led to the dining hall, where the smell of food already wafts from the plate set down on the thick mahogany table. You feel the soft crunch of a carpet under your feet, positioned between the table and the waxed wooden floors. Across the room, coals burn the stone hearth. The warmth is a comfortable buffer against the chilly winds of the evening. Remus guides you to a plush seat, where you take your place across from West Luke and Cedric. Please, have a seat. Luke waggles his eyebrows at you for a reason you can't fathom. West exchanges a glance with you, possibly pleased to see you. His expression remains as reserved as always. Cedric watches you enter the building, turning his gaze towards the plate before him, resting both paws in his lap. Steam rises from your plate of roasted pheasant, stuffed with huge cloves of fragrant garlic and crusted over with charred herbs. Served alongside it is a dollop of sweet berries and stalks of roasted parsnip. In a cloth-covered basket on the table are sliced loaves of fresh rye, from which, smell the, from, which the fresh, from which the smell of freshly baked bread sits heavy in the air. Uneven slabs of butter are placed on small ceramic plates on either side. Holy crap! They eat like this every day? Incredible. Wow, this looks really good. It's the best we could do, given the circumstances. To our newest champion. Remus raises a glass of red wine. There's a cordial exchange of toasts across the table. To Kieran, Wes, and Luke. And Cedric. And Cedric, too. Cedric stares at you, conflicting emotions warring on his face. He's simultaneously touched and mortified. Of course, of course. And Cedric. You smile politely and take a sip from your glass. 
The wine is, as far as you can tell, good. You've gathered long ago that it's socially taboo to express that most wines taste indistinguishable to you. I hate to get down to business so quickly, but time is of the essence. Oh. I hate to get down to business so quickly, but time is of the essence. Now that we have our final champion, we shall set off for Grim Mountain within a week's time. Why not right away? We'll need time to retrain Kieran. A week, a week will ideally strike the appropriate balance between preparation and haste. A week. Be fine. We'll need time to brush up on the basics. Is a week enough time? He's not gonna get good good in a week, no offense. Isn't it enough that he's part of the prophecy? As long as we have the three people, is it even possible to lose? That doesn't mean we shouldn't be prepared. Remus nods, and you see Cedric puff out his puff out his chest a little in response. He's right. It's best if Kieran is prepared. He'll have to land the killing blow in the heart if we are to succeed. Besides, there's no better teacher than experience. The lord of the days it takes to reach about the base. You know what we you know what we should do? Oh god. We should magically swap Cedric and Kieran's bodies. Cover our bases. Sure. I guess. One of them gets his knowledge, the other gets his body. It's a win-win. Speaking of his body, you recognize that Cedric has filled out more since high school. His jacket fits a little tight around the shoulders and you last remember when he lagged behind you in gym. Do you even know how to do that? No, but give me a week and I'll learn how. Like the time you wanted to learn how to make a self-replenishing army of inanimate objects, so you animated a bunch of bread to make more of itself? <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye